Hi, my name is Nehal Nayak. I am from Surat. I am working as a clinical embryologist since 2010. I have done my masters in clinical embryology from Monash University, Australia. Okay, so today we'll talk about IVF lab setup or an embryology set lab setup. What is the minimal requirement according to the new ART bill? Uh, minimally uh, required uh, persons and the equipments and the media and disposable that we will all discuss in brief in this uh, presentation. So firstly you require a experienced and qualified embryologist who will guide you throughout your whole process and secondly you require an architect best or a builder uh, who will guide you and who has done this kind of uh, setup before and thirdly how to choose the location, area, floor, what kind of building material you, are, you should be using, what kind of air quality or the flow of the air is required in an IVF lab or an IVF clinic, staff, equipments, certified equipments and media, disposable, proper documentation and firstly and foremost according to the new law you need to register your lab. So, you need to match all the mandatory requirements according to the ART bill. So, firstly we will talk about the location. What kind of location you require to set up an IVF lab? So, according to my experience, you can set up IVF lab anywhere in the world. It just requires a good capital, good marketing team and you need to have best person who can give you best success rate. So you can set up your IVF lab anywhere in the world. Secondly, the area, which area you should choose for your IVF lab need to be near a uh, patient pool like it should be convenient for your patients to come to your lab. You should have proper parking, you should have uh, clean, not exactly clean but good air quality around your building also. and. Uh, if you have any industrial um, factories or some kind of uh, smoke coming out of that factories, you should avoid that places. And then the level in the building. If you are choosing a building and uh, you are uh, supposed to buy which floor, you are supposed to decide which floor you should buy, then you should always go for the top floor. So you could get a lesser footfall and clean air and uh, more favorable environment for an em embryology lab. So you need to have good uh, road or uh, uh, transport facility which can allow your media disposable to come to you uh, in a good temperature control box easily and you can have uh, better access to engineers and uh, other people who can come and do your calibration and QA, QC regularly or uh, quarterly so that your equipments do not uh, malfunction frequently. So according to the new ART bill, IVF lab or the embryology lab or the IVF clinic is now called a level 2 ART clinic and it should have, it must have rather OPU OT where all the surgical retrieval of the gametes happen, embryology lab where the, all the handling of oocytes and embryo is uh, done outside the human body and andrology lab for processing the semen, then the embryo transfer room or the ET room where the embryos are transferred to the uterus of the patient and then the freezing room where all the storage happens of the gametes and then the collection room where the semen collection uh, takes place. All these rooms are approximately it should have 100 to 150 square feet of area and that you should be able to maintain good air quality in that uh, all that room also. Now the building materials. All the building material you use you should make sure that they are not toxic to your embryo, not toxic to your gametes as well as you. It should be non-porous like you can't use uh, fabrics, curtains, carpets and uh, you can't have windows in your IVF lab. 
if you if your uh, structure doesn't allow you to remove that window you should put a double glass glazing blur window instead of the regular opening window in the IVF lab it should be easy to clean and dirt free and materials you use you make sure that they are made up of stainless steel or metal which is uh, not corrosive stone marble or uh, any kind of uh, epoxy panels that can be used in your embryology lab and what is the things you should avoid is the plastic and wood because they can give you more contamination and VOCs. So now what about the ceiling, wall, floor and windows if they are there in the uh, windows if they are there in the IVF lab. So all the joints between the ceiling, the floor and the walls should be seamlessly joined avoiding the gaps. I will show you the figure how it should be. If you are uh, going for a modular lab then there is no issues but if you are going for a regular lab then you make sure that the, all the joints are curved and seamlessly joined. And lighting, lighting should not be prominent like it should be in a flat level with the ceiling no gaps no joints and better to use filament lighting. And if there are any gaps if you are putting any filtration unit a positive pressure unit and if there are any gaps you should make sure that you fill it with the silicone gel right now no direct sunlight is uh, should be coming in the IVF lab you should uh, coat the windows with the reflective heat absorbing material floor should be strong and non slippery and easy to clean so this is the figure which shows you how your lab uh, should have the curved uh, joints between the ceiling floor and the walls which generally are there in the modular labs. So paint and glues so whatever material you are using to paint the walls if you are not using tiles or epoxy paint then it should you should make sure that it should have the zero VOCs. VOCs are the volatile organic compounds. Uh, 5 mg per liters are assumed as a zero VOC but above all above that uh, are not uh, advisable and you should use like you should choose lower kind of shades like more uh, to the whites because uh, when a color tint is added to that color it increases the VOCs 10 grams per liter. So make sure that you use zero VOC paints and uh, e-color which contains e-color paint contains uh, zero VOCs plus it does not outguess the uh, guessing so you can use the e-color paint also. These are all the sources which can uh, like contaminate your lab or we can uh, produce more and more uh, VOCs so you should make sure that all these things are may, uh, well maintained. Then main uh, VOC, highest VOCs are in the incubators. When you keep your uh, disposable which are empty in your incubators, your incubator is has the highest VOCs. So never put the uh, plain VO disposables in your incubator which you are using for culture. You can put that uh, disposable in the uh, gassing incubator or the box incubator but never put the empty disposables in your culture incubator. Now the source of con contamination like all the facilities which you are using uh, for your uh, lab like walls, floors, ceilings, paints all this can cause contamination. Equipments uh, whatever you are using like uh, mops cleaning uh, mops or uh, brooms that can also give you contamination. People can give you contamination, clothes can give you, uh, your OT dress can give you contamination. Make sure you change your o OT dress whenever they are uh, emitting lints from it. So it is advisable to change your OT dress regularly whenever you feel they are not good and they are emitting fibers. Then how to control the contamination as well as the air quality of the lab. 
so firstly you should put a good filter like hepa filter or the carbon coated filter and then you should control the temperature of the lab and then the humidity of the lab there are uh, temperature humidity meters available in the market you can buy and put it in your lab so that you can watch uh, the humidity and temperature of the lab so you can avoid the contamination now uh, to maintain the air quality and the airflow of the lab what you should do like you you should put hepa filters or the activated carbon filters in lab as well as ot because ot is where you get your oocytes or you retrieve your oocytes so that should also have a good air quality and then uh, you sh you can use the coda filters or other photocatalytic filters to clean the air in the ot lab as well as the utility and what should be the air flow in the whole setup so this uh, diagram shows you the man flow which is in the red and the air flow which is in the blue so the man flow should be from outside to inside and the air flow should be from inside to outside so you should follow this like airflow from the most clean room that is the embryology room to the ot and to the non clean room like change room or office and air exchange should be 12 to 15x per meter minute calculation is based on the room volume which your lab is uh, built of and no uv should be used in the embryology lab while working so this is the example of the lab guard filtration system which shows you how you can put the inlet which throws the good air inside the filtered and clean air inside the lab and there is one outlet which sucks out the bad air and here the air is not circulated every time clean air is uh, throw in thrown into the lab now the staff requirements and qualification according to the art bill gynecologist he or she should should be pg in obgy and 3 years of experience in art and done 50 opus second is the anesthetist pg in anesthesia embryologist masters in em clinical embryology and 5 years of experience counselor should be uh, bsc in psychology or nursing andrologist must be masters in urology director who should be pg in medical or life science management level 2 clinical art clinic should have minimum of this equipments according to the bill so firstly is the microscope three microscopes are there binocular microscope to uh, like count uh, the motility uh, and uh, count of the semen second is the stereozoom microscope for scanning the oocytes third is the icsi microscope and manip manipulator as its name suggest for icsi then you should have minimum of two incubators and if you are having two incubators one should be a box incubator and the other should be a bench top incubator the incubator which you are culturing should have compartments so whenever you open the compartment the other patient is not disturbed and mainly huvet and uh, a trigus incubator is good for culturing the embryos and then the laminar air flow laminar air flow means the flow as i told you earlier the flow should be from the cleanest to the dirtiest area and then sperm counting chamber centrifuge refrigerator crop preservation in equipments Uh, om aspiration pump usg machine with a needle guide test tube warmer and a uh, anesthesia trolley these are the minimum requirements for ivf lab so now we'll talk about the media used for uh, ivf first thing is the flushing media flushing media has heparin and it's used generally for uh, semen pro, uh, preparation or scanning the oocytes and it can be used outside the incubator for longer time 
compared to the other medias because it is hippies buffered medium and other medias are bicarbonate buffer medium. So, fertilization media, cleavage media, blastosis media, if you are doing a sequential culture then you need all these three medias and if you are doing a continuous culture then you need only one media that is one step media and then you need vitrification media, warming media, semen freezing media, PVP 10% or 7%, hyalase to denude the oocytes and paraffin oil to layer all the plates so that they don't get contaminated. Now the other thing is disposables. All the disposables which whatever you use in the IVF lab and the media should be CE marked, certified, ME tested that is mouse embryo tested and make sure that they are all properly sterilized or gamma rays sterilized. Firstly, you need a semen container, pickup needle, ET catheter, holding injection pipettes, strippers you need of different diameters, then you need ICSI pipettes, then you need ICSI plates, uh, different types of plate you need at different stages of the process and then you need the test tubes and droppers. Now we will talk about composition of media. Here I have put on the IUI media composition also because here also we are processing semen for IVF or ICSI. So any media which is used in IVF ha have the basic uh, same composition but the main ingredient changes according to its utility. For example, if we are using the media for uh, scanning then it should be able to uh, use outside the incubator for longer time so that it contains hippies buffer and if you are using media for culturing then it should contain bicarbonate plus some media contains also contains hippies plus bicarbonate buffer so that it can be used outside as well as inside the incubator and if you are using the media for uh, vitrification we need the cryoprotectants in that. So according to the process and according to its uh, usage the basic ingredients remain same but the main ingredient changes. So now we will talk about the logistics. What is the costing of the IVF laboratory? These are the estimate figures it can change uh, yearly. So according to this uh, it can cost somewhere around 51 to 52 lakhs for the basic requirement instruments of for the IVF laboratory. Now about the most important part which is documentation. All the records must be maintained for 10 years as per the ART rules and now according to the new ART bill you have to register your IVF clinic and you have to upload all the records in the national registry on the national registry site as per uh, informed. And second thing is you have to maintain all the SOPs, equipment instruction manuals and it should be followed strictly. Equipment validation, calibration and AMC is also mandatory according to the new rules. So now about the license and registration. So according to the new bill you have to register your lab and you have to get license to run that lab and you have to renew also that license according to the advisory and you have to pay fees for that renewal as well as registration also as mentioned on the screen. So, uh, ART level 1 clinic has to pay 50,000, level 2 clinic has to pay 2 lakhs and ART bank has to pay 50,000 initially and after then you uh, according to their advisory we have to renew our certificates or the registration. Uh, periodically. Yes. So now in conclusion as I always conclude with this uh, saying that you need to have best infrastructure, best equipments and regular QA, QC, best staff which means like highly qualified, highly skilled and experienced staff to run the lab efficiently and for good results. Thank you very much.